As near as I can tell, there was only one person at ReasonCon that didn't have any fun. Now, I'm sorry, let me back that up a bit. Because there were two old Christian ladies working the hotel bar that didn't seem to be enjoying themselves very much. And I think a, a few of the caterers at the VIP dinner that got to hear Heath call God a cross-dressing transgender hermaphrodite that eventually landed on gay man, they didn't seem to be enjoying themselves much either. Uh, and also the dude that was trying to sleep in the room next to the one that we were partying in until 5 a.m., he definitely didn't have fun unless he really enjoys calling the cops on us over and over again, in which case he had a blast. But as near as I can tell, there was only one person who intentionally came to this conference that didn't enjoy himself. The weather was shit on Saturday. It's a, a little colder than it normally would be this time of year, and there's a pissy mist of rain that never let up for a minute, but that didn't stop him from coming. Might have stopped all the people he thought were coming with him, but he was there all by his lonesome, parked as close to the event as the hotel security would let him park, and he had a little Christian flag. See, he was there to tell us that we were going to hell, and other than, I guess, a couple of people brave in the rain long enough to fuck with him, I don't know that he got to condemn anybody. By 1 o'clock, he'd retreated to the safety of his van, hiding from a dozen podcasters that would happily best him in a debate on the record, and all that remained of his feeble protest against reason was a rain-soaked blue and white flag flaccidly drooping against the passenger's door of his van. By 4 o'clock, he'd given up entirely. See, I guess it turned out we weren't as fun to yell at as he thought we would be. Turns out it isn't as fun to condemn a minority when you're outnumbered. See, I, I have a retraction that I need to toss out, and I've never been so happy to retract something I said on this show, because in last week's diatribe, I said there was nowhere on earth where you could walk a mile and see a dozen don't bother praying signs, but clearly I had forgotten about the parking lot for atheist conventions. Oh, the glorious bumper stickers. I, I had a lot of fun all weekend picturing some wholesome Christian family. Didn't know what the fuck they were getting into. You know, they're on their way down to the Holy Land experience or whatever. Decide to stop in Hickory along the way. They're toting their luggage into the hotel. They see the first bumper sticker. They're like, what the fuck? They see the second one. They're like, oh, holy shit. Now they're like ushering their children's eyes away from slogans like religion is make-believe, beware of God, and nothing fails like prayer. And then they finally get inside just to be greeted by a bunch of scarlet letters and Jesus jokes on one in three t-shirts. They grab their room key. They're quick heading to the fucking room, but they got to get past the bar. And sure enough, a couple of Tom and Cecil's fans showed up in the glory hole shirt. It was so awesome. The conversational snippets that waft in as they hurry past include a number of interesting new uses for Jesus' crew fiction wounds. There's a sign in the hallway that says Roast of God, 9 p.m. Some proximate conversation in the elevator dismantles Pascal's wager in three ways per floor. They finally make it to the room. They lock the door. They turn the TV to TBN, crank it all the way up, pull out the Gideon, and then leave under the cover of darkness the following morning. Bwah! And finally, finally, at some point while they're praying for the souls of their children in the aftermath of that atheist onslaught, for a brief fucking second, they know what it's like for me to walk a mile in any direction. They know what it's like to be bombarded with messages about a worldview that they find objectionable every time they turn around. They know for the briefest moment what it's like to be anything other than a Christian in this country. And maybe, just maybe, during a conversation mom and dad didn't really want to have, their kids learn for the first time that there are people out there that don't believe in God. And maybe something the kids read or overheard sticks. And maybe one of the caterers that begrudgingly poured drinks for godless heathens overheard something in one of the talks before our roast that they're going to have to bring back to their pastor, right? You know, maybe one of the bartenders or hotel clerks had their doubts for a long time and just never realized there was an atheist community that they could connect to. Now, these are just a couple of the ancillary benefits of having these conferences, of course. It's by no means the point, but all of this stuff matters. So even if we're doing something as hedonistic as just all showing up at the same hotel to get shit-faced together, that matters. It matters that we come together. And it obviously, you know, the talks and the charities that are represented there and the community groups that are strengthened, all of that shit matters probably a little bit more. But what really matters the most is the friendships that we're creating. Because we're creating support networks for people who can't find those things locally. We're giving people a chance to escape the suffocating grasp of passive evangelism and not-so-passive evangelism for a weekend and put down a mask that they're forced to wear every other day of their lives. You know, some people dismiss the utility of atheist conventions because they say well, that, you know, all we're doing is preaching to the choir. Well, maybe that's true and maybe that isn't, but just assembling the choir has plenty of benefits. How the hell else are we going to sing? 
You know, the connections and the collaborations board at these events, these have real consequences. They tackle real problems, and there is work to do that we need to do together. And most of the time, it seems impossible. But when you're in a room with hundreds of other people that will stand up and cheer for somebody's personal triumph of our faith, these insurmountable obstacles between this nation and secularism seem a hell of a lot more surmountable. Of course, you have to wake up, you know. The, the weekend's over, we drag our asses out of bed an hour after checkout, and we have to go back to the real world. We have to drive down I-75 and read billboards with messages like, Jesus is the way, God is the only truth, and I shit you not, evolution is a lie, exclamation mark, Genesis 1. My personal favorite, by the way, it was a wacky mess of a sign. It said, Jesus is still in charge, and then it's got Jesus superimposed over a bunch of, like, army pictures, and there's soldiers and tanks and helicopters. I don't know what the fuck that was all about, but I'm sure that's a message that needs to be countered. 